can be imported into an InDesign project by either copying and pasting it from a source, like copying it directly from Gutenberg.org, or you can save it in a text-based file. In this case, I have a word processing file in Microsoft Word. And then you can use the place action in InDesign to place the text similarly to the way that we placed images when we learned how to format and place images into an InDesign project. So I've taken a minute to copy and paste the first few chapters of A Tale of Two Cities into this Microsoft Word document, and then I saved it. When we go back to InDesign, you can see that this text has been copy and pasted. Let's repeat the process of importing text, but this time let's place the text as a file. So again, we need to create a new document, file, new, and document. The settings can be anything that you want. I am going to leave facing pages turned on and you need to have a primary text frame because the primary text frame is what is going to allow your text to auto flow. Once you create your new document, it's only one page if we look at the pages panel, but we have an automatic text frame, a primary text frame, and we can select it and choose file place. We want the text from our Microsoft Word document to go into that text frame. We need to find wherever it's been saved. I saved it on my desktop as a tale of two cities. And then select open. When you place text into a primary text frame, the text will flow into that frame. And then if you wait, InDesign will automatically auto flow the text from page one to page two and page two to page three and three to page four. In this case, based on the number of chapters that I included in that Microsoft Word document, it needed to add 10 pages. The last page has very little on it, um, but it needed that 10th page to be able to finish. Just like if we copy and paste our content, we are responsible for the editing of the text. If we do something to the text to make it so that there aren't enough, there isn't enough text to fill up all 10 pages, for example, maybe we select all of our text and we decrease the letting. So we use 12 point letting instead of the default settings. If we do something that causes the document to have more pages than we're filling, it is our responsibility to decide what happens to that page. You should delete a page that you're not using. There are additional considerations that you can make when formatting books and things like that. You might need this blank page on page 10 so that when you start the next chapter or the next document, it would start on a right-hand side page. But it's your responsibility to make sure that if you edit the text in some way, you're always double-checking that you're using the pages that you think that you're using.